Hey, welcome back Design Squad and in this mini-series for design systems we're gonna continue on setting a design system in Sketch from scratch using Atomic Design Bones or Framework to make it actually well so we can actually work with uh, actual design systems eventually, right? If you remember from previous episode, we set up a simple structure, atoms, molecules, organism, templates, pages, and labs for certain format so it's easy to distinguish for us going forward. Now in this episode, we're gonna start covering bit by bit, we're going to start deconstructing existing brand guidelines, existing mock-up, a sketch resource, and then fill it in into atoms. And atoms are the smallest particles. I usually go a step back and call it quarks as well. Quarks to me is what I would usually put in the labs, which is basically maybe some snippets of color, maybe it's a palette, maybe it's a, some sort of experimental type of thing which hasn't been user tested or proven yet. Once you're done with that and you know that these are the functional type of snippets you, you can use in your you know resources, then you can start filling in the atom. And here I'm gonna just simply start defining the basics, which is basically one of the sheets is gonna be colors. Then there's gonna be, of course, a typography or type, let's call it simply. And then you could also, you know, do anything else what's, you know, most relevant to you. But I think at atomical level, the simple things like colors type, maybe even icons, let's say, should cover it at a basic level of, of what we have with an existing experimental mockup, if you remember, for Microsoft Teams here. And I think that should cover most of it. Type is pretty simple. I'm gonna scavenge it from the existing Microsoft guidelines. Colors, uh, again, is gonna scavenge from the experimental bits as well as guidelines. And if you remember, I have this folder with a lot of different bits from Microsoft of how I should approach bits. Again, there is not existing resource for Microsoft Teams specifically, which I could get my hands on. So it's okay. I mean, it's still, it's about the processes. Let me just go ahead really quickly and define the colors in my atoms. And it's gonna be really simple. All I need to do is just have some values, something I can replicate in symbols. And, and if you remember from my previous videos, I would want to start with defining maybe a few blocks. Uh, so maybe a few primary colors and it's up to you what format you want to use. But right off the bat, just la let me make a template real quick. Boom. And so let's say that for my colors, for a primary at least, and then secondary, this is going to be the basic template. Now what I'm going to do is just simply start extracting the color from Microsoft or from my mockup one by one. Boom. So let's say one is defined. Now, if you want to make that dynamic switch, you would want to just click and create dynamic symbol and you would want to name it, let's say color, uh, blue slate, or even actually primary blue slate. Imagine that this is an actual primary color. Boom. So now it's a symbol. And next, what I would want to do is to actually go and, and just make copies of this bad boy, go ahead and just define every single primary color we had picked out of different resources and every single secondary color, but update the sketch symbols behind it. Meaning this is just a copy of this thing. However, if I go in depth, here is where I can start defining every single color. And that's where it really matters for my, you know, for my own sake and actually reusing of the symbols going forward. So this is going to be that next one, which is like a dark slate, let's say, and just going to rename it dark slate and then go back to atoms and just select dark slate from my predefined stuff give it a name and also edit the hex value if you need it if you don't need it don't bother with it but if you do need it um i would recommend to extract it boom and gonna do that for every single color Boom. And so I defined every single shade I could find. Of course, there is more and more is different and probably it's not entirely accurate, but it's okay because this is an example. As you can see, every single one of them is now a dynamic type of state, which I can assign to any object later on in, let's say, molecules and organisms and, and other templates, right? Once I'm done with the colors, I'm going to go ahead and just define the type. And the type, you know, in Sketch, you could define in the styles 
for example you see it have a lot of different styles already but they're from you know from other documents so i would need to re ignore it however i might just want to define exactly you know on a basic level of how my h1s look like how my let's say h2s look like and and so forth and just have that example ready whenever some other designers would come in and actually you know want to use this document to go forward and create their own designs and so this is the basis for a design system the same way as i did with my designs i could compare to branding guidelines or I could go back into my lab, into where I have that basic mock-up and start extracting different bits from here on. And so in this case, I just decided to go ahead and go text by text, at least key bits here and just record them. So let's say this one, I might just create, you know, a new style because it's a unique and I might just call it search text or let's say input text, I guess I could just rename it because that's the same as here. I also gonna go ahead and I can see this is the same. Let's say this card, I'm gonna need to go to the symbols because I created it using symbols and just go bit by bit. For example, this style is for the name. It could be that it's H2, H3, you know, it could be headline, but I'm just going to keep it simple and just say name because it's quite functional type of purpose driven style. And this is could be, let's say, chat text or something like that. So all the styles are going to take that. And this could be a timestamp. And so just going through every single one of them. This could be, let's say, replies. And as you can see, I'm just going crazy with it. And that should cover most of it. So now if I go back to atoms, and since I define all those text styles and sketch, I can just go one by one and just, let's say, select. Let's say this one is headline. You can also define it what you want it to, to look like. So let's say this one is Segoy UI regular. 22 points and you can even add a color let's say so lots of times you're gonna see something like this it's up to you if you want to go in that depth boom this is the simple text i don't even need a body because it's it's got covered i thought i had some open sense in it i don't anymore so type could be just summarized with those few bits and as you can see, it looks quite small compared to colors, but that's fine. That's purposeful. And you can see that I have some headlines, but everything else is almost driven by the purpose. Let's say once this atom is defined and someone is designing later on some sort of new experiment, or let's say we add a new mock-up, a new organism, and we just type it like a reply. All we have to do is just go into the predefined set style and just either select replies text, or maybe it's one of the other bits which we basically covered, which was, I think, uh, tabs is the same exact color as, as that or similar to that, or we can capture more than that. And so you always have that flexibility and, and that logic behind your design systems, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead in the labs in this specific scenario, just start exporting all the bits I have and, and icon-wise. As you can see, if it's active, it's filled in. If it's not active, it's just an outline. I'm gonna go ahead just like with uh, our color. So I'm gonna create symbols. So it's gonna be icon. Let's say this is gonna be sidebar activity. So it's purpose-driven and then do the same for chat. And as you can see, I'm creating icons for each of the bits on a screen. So this is, let's say, is settings. Boom, and as you can see, I have created quite a few icons now. Pretty well defined, some of them are active, some of them are not. It's up to you how much in depth you wanna go with it. Um, but I'm just gonna go and start adding it. As you can see, icons, chat, there's a plenty of them now. There is create team, there is a header one with a couple of states, there is a settings one, there is a sidebar one. So maybe it would make sense even to group these three. So it's an under a group, but I'll leave it up to you. If you know you're going to go ahead, you might want to do that. But I'm just going to go ahead and just start exporting them by purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and just take that headlines bit and just say, let's say chat icons. There could be then system icons. Boom. And so I captured 
as many icons as I could really. These are the ones I could find immediately. There's definitely more of them. And also something I captured while designing that mockup is other states. So it might not be an icon, but let me show you exactly what I mean by that. It could be the avatars of the people. You might want to capture that as well. Boom. There could be, again, so much more you could capture in this case. It's almost like, what's the starting point? What's the starting UI elements you need to extract in order then to start building other bits on top of it? And to be it's text colors, icons, any other graphical elements which needs to insert change, which you can actually apply to different bits. But we already entering that molecule round. If you can see, for example, to me, this would be an atom, this bit. An image would be an atom as well, which you might want to capture too. And the combination of the two of image and the status icon is really a molecule. So there's almost like we're stepping now into the next phase, into the molecule phase, which we're going to visit in the next session. So stay tuned for that. And so I hope it's useful. Give a like, subscribe to his channel, stay tuned for the other episode. And depending when you watch it, it might be already be available. So skip and, and watch it right away. And I'll see you next time.